All right, Jay. We do this every year. And I look forward to this every year, and that is favorite thing. the NFL Draft. As someone who loves drafting in general in multiple arenas in life, I look forward to this every year. So normally what we do, Jay, is we do the top 10 picks. This is who I – it's kind of a fusion of who I think should go and who I think will go at yep. that spot. Yep. I think, and then we evaluate how close I get. Usually, I only get like two to three right. <laughs> to be well, the good thing is you're guaranteed to get at least two right. I am. I got two freebies. Yeah, That's, two freebies this year. Yeah. Well, actually, you may have more than that. Maybe Man, we'll I'm thinking about it. We'll we see. List. I see a couple of no brainers in my opinion. I'll get to those. So, Jay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you my top ten picks, starting with the first pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and then I want to get your thoughts and opinions on that pick, or if you think they should go in a different direction. I like that. All, All right. right. Give me a second. Let's get prepared. And Jimmy, with the number one pick in the NFL draft, the Jacksonville Jaguars will select quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Can't miss. Easy. He's been destined for this pick ever since he was 16 years old. No way Jacksonville screws this up. Urban Meyer, Shad Khan. I mean, only I can only think of one franchise who would screw this up. And I'll give you a hint. They play in Michigan. Next. Wow, uh, that's wrong. <laughs> we would love to. We love, why did? Why would you say that, Jay? That's wrong. That's mean. We love. We love Detroit I around here. Believe this. That that was. Hey, ma. That was. Uh, that was cold bleeded, man. Cold bleeded. All right. <laughs> With the number two pick in the NFL draft, the New York Jets will select Zach Wilson, quarterback, BYU. And here's the reason why. Forget what he does on the field. Well, it actually is to do with what he does on the field. It's his play style. He has a very exciting play style. Gunslinger, maverick, throwing from odd angles, scrambling. I mean, just an exciting quarterback to watch. And with the team with uniforms as boring as the Jets, you need a quarterback like this to reboot your franchise, not just in terms of on the football field, but in terms of marketing, in terms of interest. They get Zach Wilson. They're probably going to be on television at least two times more than they were last year. He makes them watchable. So Sam Darnold 2.0 is what you're saying? No, Sam Darnold did not play like this guy. And I like Sam Darnold, but he did not play like this guy. And and there's been a lot of people showing videos of him in the comps. They play a similar type of gunslinger type of football. Zach Wilson is a cooler name, and that's not true. They're all wrong. They're all wrong? Yeah. They're all wrong. (laughs) Zach Wilson is the guy. I'm going to say this. If the Jets were smart, take Justin Fields. Yes. They're not gonna. You're right. So, nope. with the number three pick in the NFL draft, the San Francisco 49ers will select quarterback Trey Lance out of North Dakota State. When you give up three first round picks to move up into this spot, you're drafting transcendence. You're looking for who's got a Hall of Fame level ceiling. He's one of the two, in my opinion, the other is Justin Fields, who has that. He's got Colin Kaepernick level feet, who this franchise is very familiar with. And he's got a Patrick Mahomes level arm. And that is who I see. I see Mahomes more than Kaepernick when I watch him play, just in how he throws the ball, when he throws the ball. And he's one of those, you know, that Russell, the thing about Russell Wilson that I love the most is creating a new pocket for yourself, scrambling to not pick up five or six yards and go down and go out of bounds, but to create a new pocket for yourself. So to me, from the very start, when they made this trade, and you will recall this, I said it's got to be Trey Lance. He's the only one, quarterback-wise, who I see with a transcendent ceiling, so you don't move heaven and earth to get a kind of quarterback that you already have. Because people say Mac Jones, but they already have Mac Jones. They have two. His name is Jimmy Garoppolo, and his name is Josh Rosen who people didn't even know still played in the league. No, he's in San Francisco. He is a 49er. Yes. And I was actually excited about that because I felt like he would probably be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So so change of pace. Keep Jimmy G. You went to a Super Bowl with him. Let him start this season. Give him the Mahomes treatment. And then if it's not looking good, you want to get him in there towards the end of the season. Perfect. He will have had a year to adjust to being a pro, learn the playbook, get his confidence that way, and then get on the field and do what he naturally does. So to me, all this, all this crap, all these stories, all this narrative, all this speculation, it's all Trey Lance. Okay. Number three. With the fourth pick in the NFL draft, the Atlanta Falcons select. Tight end Kyle Pitts of Florida. Transcendent as well at the tight end position. They say he's one of the best receivers in the draft, stuck in a tight end's body. Is 
it's got to be Kyle Pitts because, and there's another reason why, they honestly, they're looking to move off of Julio Jones with his contract at his age because you have Calvin Ridley who's already ready to go and really in most respects is the number one receiver of that team. So Julio is expendable. And you could probably – you know, kind of sucker a franchise into I go back to Detroit. I hate to do that because I really do like the Lions because I'm a huge Barry Sanders fan. But you can probably trade Julio Jones and get some draft capital or get some players to a team like Detroit who really is in desperate need of a number one receiver because the one they had, Kenny Galladay, is a New York Giant now. So Kyle Pitts, you're in a position, yes, they're fielding calls for this, but you have the opportunity to get a transcendent talent at the tight end position, something that we don't hardly ever see. Tight ends never go this high in the draft. I think the last highest was Vernon Davis, number six of the 49ers, and that was, what, 12 years ago, Roughly. give or take? Yep. So go generational talent, go Kyle Pitts. You didn't have to do anything to get up to this spot like San Francisco did. He's the pick. So what you're saying is is that they're going to continue to ride with Matt Ryan. Yes. On goodwill, he might have one or two seasons left, and you're going to start looking at the future and yep. the draft next year with quarterbacks in very good. Yep. And you can That's- think he still is putting up 4,000-yard seasons, 10 straight, and you can think Breeze and Brady for increasing the, the, play, the life of quarterbacks into their early 40s. Ah, so they're going to end up in the top five pick again next year. Okay, thank you. Probably. Um, Number five with the (laughs) fifth pick in the NFL draft, the Cincinnati Bengals will select. Tackle Panay Sewell of Oregon. Why? Because you saw what happened to your quarterback when you didn't protect him the way that you should. And you've also seen the life and times of Andrew Luck, who was a fantastic quarterback, just like Burrow was coming out of LSU. And they didn't decide to get an offensive line until after he retired. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so since he since he has enough sense enough not to do that since he has enough sense enough to okay. since he enough not to do that so they're going to protect him Panay Sewell Panay Sewell is a smart pick all right yeah. with the number six pick in the NFL draft the Miami Dolphins are going to select wide receiver Jamar Chase out Ooh. of where is he LSU? LSU yeah that's right he didn't play this year we've seen him up close they say he's the best receiver in the draft and they want Tua to have no excuses whatsoever so that when they move off of him, they will know that they gave him another full season. All these weapons, we get Wolf Fuller in free agency. Uh, They got a running back, too. I cannot think of who that was, Mm -hmm. but it's a pretty good running back. We have our coaching staff. We got a good defense. Brian Flores is turning into a superstar. So if if we don't get to the playoffs again, it's going to be all to his fault. We're going to move off of him, and then we're going to bring in another quarterback. So having Jamar Chase helps them with that narrative. Jamar Chase with Devontae Parker and Malcolm Brown as a running back. That they Malcolm play. Brown, yeah, he's solid. Solid yeah, running back. They've got, they've got and running. Mike, their tight end, Mike Jasicki, I believe he's a pro bowler. He's good. He's a real good player. Yeah, that's true. He, yep. he, he's really great for my fans. So no, ex, no excuses for Tua. Oh, man. So you really think they're going to move off of Tua quickly? Uh, I mean, if they give him all these weapons and he looks like he did last year, if he doesn't make a decent enough leap, yes, they will move off of him. They thought about doing it this year. Honestly, they didn't because obviously if they were planning to, they would have stayed at three and not traded with San Francisco. That's a good point. Well, technically they've got some good quarterbacks left to draft at this point. So True. with the number seven pick in the NFL draft, the Detroit Lions are going to select. Wide receiver Devontae Smith, Heisman Trophy winner out of Alabama. Mm. Many mocks that I've seen have them taking Jalen Waddle, also of Alabama, in this spot. But the advantage, because Waddle is faster, but Devin Smith, for one, he plays much bigger than six foot one sixty six. If you just watched his tape, you would not believe that those were his measurements. And yes, he made Mac Jones's life a lot easier by being open all the time because he just knows how to get open all, all the, time. the time. He is fantastic. I could see the Lions not choosing him, but I think that they should choose him in this spot. And then I guess if they don't want Julio Jones, you you bring him in as your number one receiver and just build, kind of build around him. You got DeAndre Swift at the running back position. You have a good tight end, young tight end, TJ Hawkinson. And then you'll see what Jared Goff can do, I guess. Now, what will be interesting is if they take a quarterback at this spot, because that tells you all that you need to know about what they think about Jared Goff. That is true. But I see them taking Devontae Smith. So you're calling for Devontae Smith. Mm-hmm. Okay, good job. Oh, Devontae. Jay, we got a trade. <laughs> <Do-do-do, do-do-do. laughs> the trading into the number eight spot with the Carolina Panthers, the New England Patriots. Oh, are and moving. so with the number eight pick in the NFL draft, the New England Patriots will now select. Mac Brady, I mean, Mac Jones, quarterback, oh, Alabama. Yeah. Mac Brady, huh? <laughs> and We're that's the go. reason why they want him. 
obviously Josh McDaniels saw how much success he could have with an ups- with a quarterback of this mold, traditional pocket passer from a big time program, had a better career than Tom Brady had, but someone who a lot of what their packages were, he can easily fit right into. So I think they're going to trade up and get Mac Jones. Uh, either him or Justin Fields, but I'm going to say Mac Jones. I think they're going to play it safe in a way. And then you sit him, you have Cam Newton on a one-year contract, sit him behind Cam, and they still probably would believe that Cam could lead them to the playoffs. They think that they can win this division or at least compete with it with Buffalo. They don't see the Dolphins as a threat, but you have this Tom brady s quarterback waiting in the wings. And then if you like Cam, you want to sign him to another deal, maybe. Or if you don't, move off of him, get the kid in, second year. One full year to prepare. So they're going to trade up for Mac Jones. Okay. I wonder why they don't just trade for Jimmy Garoppolo and send like a six-round pick back to San Francisco for him. San Francisco first said they wanted a first. By draft day, they might move it to a second or a third. So they're going to move it to like a fifth or a sixth. Probably. Yeah, because capital-wise, as far as cost, Mm -hmm. it's not worth the money. They they know they're going to move off of them anyway. Eventually, you're going to release them. And guess what? You can get them for pennies. Correct. You may as well trade them for cheap. All right. Which is why... New England probably won't trade for him. So, yeah. with the number nine pick in the NFL draft, the Denver Broncos will select Justin Fields, quarterback out of Ohio State. I see that. Ex- I see that too. If he falls that far, uh-huh. there's no reason for Denver to not grab him. And Elway finally gets the quarterback he's been trying to get since Peyton Manning retired. Yep. And then the joke I've always said, and I got this from Bo. He always says this: is John Elway looking at him like, you know who you remind me of. <laughs> Me. (laughs) Elway loves a quarterback Uh that reminds him of himself. But you know what? If I'm Justin Fields, I want to be a Bronco. I really do. Yeah, the Broncos will be a great landing spot for him. Solid pieces on offense and defense. A Hall of Fame quarterback has the GM, which mostly helps you, but somewhat has hurt you. everything besides his own position right for the most part. Right. The only thing I don't like is I have a defensive coach in Vic Fangio who, if they're not good again this year, they're going to move off of him and get an offensive coach. Yeah, but outside of that, players. Denver, you know, I see Denver, even when they're down, they're still a solid team. They're still, they're still competitive. competitive. Yes, you, you know? I, I agree. And that, and, that, and that you have to kind of give John Elway props for that, for putting together, constructing a, a team that, like I said, still competitive. Defense has been solid for years. Uh-huh. And it feel it seems like he, I guess, as a former quarterback, he knows what good defenders look like. Uh-huh. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so it makes sense for him to be able to actually pick out better defenders than he would actual replacements for himself. Because you can't look at the standard tools of a quarterback at height and weight and think, or even arm strength, and think that they're going to be something. Because right. there's so many quarterbacks that have rockets for arms that still can't figure out how to even run a playbook properly or even work hard enough to even do it. Uh huh. There's so many things to look for. Then I feel like John Elway, I don't know if he knows how to find that stuff because he was just a natural beast at the role. But, yeah, he can find good defensive players. Mm-hmm. That man can find a, 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 a diamond in the rough easily. Yeah, yeah. solid defense. I guess he's thinking about if he's going to get hit. That's probably what it is. <laughs> probably. All right, so as we round out the top ten picks, the n- number ten pick in the NFL draft, the Dallas Cowboys will select. Michael Parsons, linebacker out of Penn State. Ooh. Ooh, now, I see why now. Right. Today, earlier today, that was not my pick until I saw the news on Sean Lee. Before that, I had them taking uh, this cornerback J.C. Horn out okay. of South Carolina. Now, most mocks have Patrick Sertan Jr. I mean, obviously, you know, cornerback stock in his blood have them taking him. And I think he's a really good pick, too, out of Alabama. Oh, um, my God. Yeah, for um, – We're old. Yeah, very we've old. Hit, we've hit a certain right. in the second already now. And I think Asante Samuel Jr. is in this draft yes. as well. And I, Antonio Winfield Jr. plays for yep, the last Bears. year. Right. Yeah, really, really good we're player. Getting old. I'm seeing juniors of people right now. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So, but I think it's going to be Micah Parsons. And I think that he's the best linebacker in the draft. He might actually, because at this point, he would be the first defensive player off the board. And I mm-hmm. could see that happening either way. I think so I th- ratings wise, he is the top defensive player on uh-huh. everybody's av- best available mm-hmm. by, between him and was it Jeremiah? Right. In this out of, out of uh, Notre, Notre, Dame. Notre Dame, yeah. Yeah. And this is what they need. You know, there's been all this this talk in the media, Jerry Jones doing his usual Jerry Jones thing of wanting to move up in the draft to get Kyle Pitts, which he'd have to move up to four in order to do that. Yeah. But that's the point, and that's the problem that's been the problem with Dallas is clearly you need defense. You needed it last year and you got 
a shiny new Lamborghini. Another one is C.D. Lamb, who's a really good wide receiver. We know him well around here. But to do that again, instead of really drafting for need, you know, the top player at their position would be asinine. So they, you know, seeing with Sean Lee retiring, they've got they've got to go either Michael Parsons or get one of those two top corners who could be a shutdown corner, create their own island. And that does wonders for a defense. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yes, it does. Hmm, that makes sense. Yep. Okay. So those are my top 10. You see any more interesting uh, players that I didn't mention that didn't make the top 10? To be absolutely honest, you kind of hit all of my, the, my question was going to be about uh, Michael Parsons mm-hmm. and it, where you felt like he was going to land, as well as uh, Rashawn Slater, no, uh, yeah. Northwestern offensive lineman. I was wondering if one of these teams would end up grabbing an O-lineman instead. Yeah, maybe if since he has him rated higher, I could see them taking him. I don't see them – Going off, you don't think so? Yeah, I think he's going. Unless the Chargers trade up and pick him up to to reunite him with Justin Herbert. Yeah, because they pick what thirteen, something like that. Yeah, if they so that would be good. They re, they move up in the draft to reunite the quarterback with uh-huh. uh, the, the, uh, that'd be good teammates. Yeah, I could see them them then um, if the Bengals aren't mm-hmm. the one making the trade. I can see them doing slightly. Now, I'll tell you something else that's interesting about this draft is I believe the Giants are at 11 right after the Cowboys. Yep. So I wonder if who the Cowboys pick, let's say they and the Giants have the same need, and if they pick this player that keeps them away from one of their division rivals. So I could see that happening. But I think it's going to be one of those defensive players that the Giants take that I just mentioned right after the Cowboys, unless Devontae Smith, who is in the teens in multiple draft mock drafts, if he falls down then they might pick him up to give Daniel Jones another weapon who's in the same position as Tua to where we've done all this in free agency in the draft. We've got all these weapons around you. If we suck this year, we're moving off of you because it's your fault. (laughs) That's something to look out for. I don't see the Giants doing that. And it's only one reason why they won't move off their quarterback. We Mm -hmm. talked about this a few episodes back when we talked about this numerous times. Okay, That would mean that their general manager would have to admit that he was wrong. True. And when have you ever thought that Gettleman would admit being wrong? <laughs> no, and, and, that, and that's, that's just the only question I'm asking. Daniel Jones is the quarterback for the Giants until Gettleman is fired. Right. Once he's fired, he is out. Fresh start. Fresh start at that point. Mm-hmm. So. And, and that's what will happen is Gettleman, he won't have to do the Giants press conference to say how wrong he was and to introduce the new starting quarterback because, like you said, he won't be there. He's going to go first. Then Daniel Jones is going to go then they're going to bring in their own GM who's going to want their own quarterback. Yeah, now GMs want their own. That's right. 